We are live. Welcome to Obi-Wan Episode 1 Thoughts. The ep uh, Episode 2 Thoughts will also be in this video. If you only want to watch those, the time codes will be in the description box. So just real quick, Andor looks amazing. Can't wait. What I've heard about Mandalorian Season 3 also sounds great. Absolutely can't wait for that. Now, yeah, so one of the trailers for this reveals that at least one of the people working for the Empire is a young woman who appears to be of Indian descent. Certainly she is not white or male. In this episode, one of the Inquisitors is a black woman. I'm pretty sure another is an Asian male. I'm on the record as saying it was very intentional that George Lucas depicted the Empire as being made up of old white men who spoke with British accents. I agree that at first glance it would appear that the show goes against that, but the show is also giving us a very early look at the Empire, and it is not unusual for dictatorships to start out without all the prejudices built in. Hitler, the monster, didn't always express a hatred towards Jews. That was something that came later. He was already a monster, of course. And yeah, so we open on the blue text, but not the yellow text crawl. Interesting choice. And some prequel clips focusing on Obi-Wan and Anakin. And when the episode itself begins, we see the Purge with a one adult Jedi and some younglings. A very De Palma long take. Love it. Very smart starting on some great lightsaber action, something that people felt was mishandled in the sequel trilogy, so a lot of people are hungry for it. Granted, we did get some in The Mandalorian. And it also, like, there's a very stark difference between, you know, that Jedi and then the first time in this episode that we see Obi-Wan himself. Now, we go to ten years later, the Inquisitors come to Tatooine, and, yeah, the lead Inquisitor played Hitman and a prominent Nazi in The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. I will never be unhappy about seeing him in something, especially where he's playing this kind of intense, scary character. Everyone looks afraid of the Inquisitors. There's, you know, I'm not the first person to point this out, but you do get a sense, like, they are... If this was World War II, they would be looking for Jewish people, you know. And we get the excellent monologue from the trailer from the lead Inquisitor about hunting Jedi. And they do almost catch the Jedi in the bar. And we see that Obi-Wan clearly wants to help the fellow worker, but he knows it'll draw Inquisitor. Like, if he stands up for him, like, that immediately is, like, a red flag. And if he has to, like... You know, the guy, the guy is bigger than him. He could take him on, but not without using Jedi means, and that will, you know, the word will spread. And I really love the scene between Obi-Wan and the Jawa, who steals his parts, sells them back to him, doesn't even bother to clean them, or deny that he's, that those are the same parts. And, like, they, I, th I think this might be the first Jawa individual, like, he has, I don't know, oh, maybe maybe there was at least one on, on Mando. The one that talked with the female mechanic. And anyway, we haven't had very many it's Jawa individuals in live-action Star Wars up to this point. So, yeah, I, I quite appreciate Like, they're on first-name basis. You know, they know each other. Like... The Jawa enters the scene and says, Ah, oh, you smell really bad. That's not the kind of thing you say to someone that you've just started doing business with. That's something you say to someone who you have a very, like... It's not... It doesn't never happen in real life, but if you're insulting the person you're doing business with, it's probably because the two of you have... You know, you're, you're used to doing business with each other. You have a relationship where that kind of thing is acceptable, you know. And Nori the Jedi wants help from Obi-Wan, who says they have to accept the fight is lost. I'm guessing Nori was one of the younglings we saw at the start, and it seems like Reva might also have been. 
great introduction to Leia. At first it looks like she's going along with the Senator Orc, but then she had one of her friends stand in. I don't know if she figured it would be enough time, or she didn't have a friend who had a similar looking hand. And she's actually in the woods looking at spaceships. And, you know, when she's caught, she seems to give her adoptive mother a hug, but she's just grabbing back Lola. And, you know, others have pointed out she, you know, that's Padme's move. She she would use decoys. I'm really glad that Owen is still played by the same guy, the director of the short Spider. And, I don't know, I think he's done something else also. And Reva continues to ask questions first, cut off limbs later. This is an episode full of great character introductions. Everyone does something really defining after, right after we first see them. The the Jedi at the start. Ah, the the all three of the Inquisitors, Obi Wan, the guy who only gives half pay, Nori, and now Child Leia, you know, just, yeah. And Jimmy Smith's is back cool, too, cool. I didn't come here to end slavery. Yeah, of course you didn't. You're a Star Wars character with authority. You don't need manners when talking to a lower life form. Then I guess I don't need manners when I'm talking to you. That's a mic drop moment right there. Her cousin is a real jerk, but she is just as perceptive and cutting right back to him. And, you know, a number of people have guessed, is she using the Force to, you know, that is a lot of knowledge. That's, she's extremely perceptive of, of his character flaws, you know, so that might be, like, she's reading his mind. There's also, you know, people point to, like, between him saying the thing and her saying the thing, like, she pauses briefly and there's this look on her face that might be her, like, accessing the information. You owe him an apology. I'd rather be digested. Wow. The Senate is boring. It's people in itchy clothes arguing. I really appreciate that Bail Organa tells Leia she is their real child. Her being adopted doesn't change that. No one should feel bad because they're adopted. Adopting a child is one of the most selfless, loving things you can do. Plus, imagine the look on your cousin's face when you get to boss him around for real. <laughs> See, you you get Leia. You you understand how to talk to her. And Leia gets chased. If you haven't already, you have got to watch the video by... I'm just really quickly going to... I, I think Mir Miromorphic? Let's see... Where... Yeah, the... the yeah, Meromorphic, and the the video is simply called Everyone is Bad at Catching Leia. It really is, like, holy crap. And then we have... see... Yeah, and the mercenaries are working with the Inquisitors, but Obi-Wan is going after them. Had to unbury his lightsaber, John Wick style. And when he gets on board the ship, it's clearly momentous, and we see that he did bring his lightsaber. Great ending to the episode. Great pilot. This really, you know, we are looking at something that's as good as Mandalorian and considerably better than The Book of Boba Fett. And I really appreciate that it doesn't feel like it's just Mandalorian. You know, it has a very different feel to it. You know, The Mandalorian is set in a world where... You know, yeah, there's technically this government that's supposed to be taking care of people, but they really don't have complete, con you know, they, they, they only have so many people and so much authority by this point. So it's, it's essentially a lawless world. It's very old west where here there are people in charge, you know, but they're fascists. So people are afraid of, I mean, imagine like the inquisitors are essentially like cops you know they're they're like like it's it's maybe equivalent to if you saw like i don't know a swat team or something imagine seeing that and thinking oh no you know instead of oh 
they must be needed. You know, they, they're here to, okay, so in real life, in, certainly in America, it's still an issue, but yeah, you know, being that afraid of people working for the government, that kind of tells you this is, you know, the government here are, are terrible, you know, the, the, like, that woman that Reba cut a hand off, she's not gonna get, like, if she goes to the Empire and says, you know, someone working for you cut off one of my hands, you know, she's, they're not gonna take care of that, they're not gonna, you know, give some kind of financial compensation or something. Now, that brings us to... Obi-Wan, episode two, thoughts. Now, right, I should just say, currently they're both just called part one and part two. I don't think they even have, on, on Disney+, Plus. I don't think they even have, like, episode names within the opening, like the Book of Boba Fett did. Now, we see Obi-Wan going through the streets. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Unless, of course, you leave the planet and go to Daimyu. And Temuera Morrison plays a clone veteran. We are now looking at stormtroopers, not clones. And the veterans are not being taken care of. I really appreciate, like... In real life, a lot of veterans are just... Yeah, not taken care of. And this show... The, the dictatorship doesn't take care of its veterans. So basically, you know, this, the show is communicating it's evil to not take care of. I mean, I mean, we know what the clones did. It's not like they were, just, you know, didn't bother doing their job or something. They were extremely effective, effective. Some people pointed to that the reason he looks so old is because of the accelerated growth. I mean, wasn't that just... Only temporary, I don't know, they pointed to, like, uh, Clone Wars or something, so, I don't know, I, I just feel like, isn't that kind of a mistake? That means that you can't have them for very long, it wouldn't it make more sense to just accelerate their growth until they're, like, old enough to have, to be of use as soldiers, and then, anyway. But yeah, never gonna complain about seeing Timura Morrison. And... Well, if she's here, you're never going to see her again. Nobody leaves this place. I was someone's daughter once, too. Here, this one's free. A couple of those, you're going to forget she ever existed. That is freaking heartbreaking, and I don't know if it was like a practical joke or something, but that's apparently uh, the actor's real daughter. So that's, I mean, okay, I get, maybe they were, like, they really badly wanted the emotions to be real, but holy crap. And Kumail Nanjiani as a scam artist pretending to be a Jedi, and we realized, you know, the guy he pretended to be mind-tricking is in on the scam, and, you know, the the um, telekinesis to close the, the shutters was like a remote control thing, I think, yeah, so... And Obi-Wan knows that he's scamming people, but in exchange for information, he'll let him go. So we are looking at a significantly less idealistic Jedi. And Obi-Wan enters a spice lab. Yes, spice, in case there are any kids watching this video. And he blows up some chemical and gets into this out-of-bounds area. Has to fight hand-to-hand. -hand. He really isn't in as good shape as in the prequels, like he said to Bail Organa. The Inquisitor really figured you out. Should be here soon. We'll be rich, and you'll be dead. You're not a Jedi anymore, Kenobi. You're just a man, standing in front of a merc, asking to be let go. Obi fights back. Flee? Flee. And Leia doesn't realize Kenobi is on her side, so she attacks him. I quite like... Oh, right, yeah. All the power in the world cannot hide that stench. Okay, this show is officially 40% people... 
people saying that other people smell bad and or saying that they have people to feed. Was someone really hungry and possibly smelly while writing this and they just couldn't focus on anything else? I really appreciate how intelligent and perceptive Leia is written, even at age 10. We already knew she was like this as an adult. I'm sure some people find it frustrating that she ends up running from Kenobi, but look at it from her certain point of view, or uncertain as it were. A guy comes to her seeming like a Jedi. You know, he, he, he didn't start out saying that he was, but he is carrying a lightsaber. He refuses to use his powers. He lies to her. She's heard all the Jedi are gone. Imagine if someone came up to you, they were wielding a weapon from someone you heard were long dead. Wouldn't you think there was something wrong? I really appreciate that Haja is actually there to help because he feels guilty. And it's it's a great, because earlier it seemed like, oh, he's going to cause trouble for Obi as well. He, you know, he's, he grabs a blaster and says, let's make sure we get to them first. Now, immediately we think, oh, he, you know, he wants revenge basically for being screwed over like that. And I really like the force-powered, what's it called, when you run up the walls and the whole, yeah, I forget, maneuvering of the city that Reva does. And when Leia falls, Obi-Wan digs down deep, manages to use telekinesis. If only Scotty Ferguson had been a Jedi. And Haja tries to slow down Reva, but she gets the information about Obi-Wan. And Leia reminds Obi-Wan of Padme. You didn't know he's alive, Obi-Wan. Anakin Skywalker is alive. I'm getting a very strong Vader reading Luke's mind while the latter hides in the throne vibe from the scene, and I love it. And Reva stabs the Grand Inquisitor. Some people have said that, you know, he's supposed to only die later in the timeline, so maybe he survived. I mean, this is a franchise where people can survive some pretty extreme things. Other people have theorized maybe it's just that the two Grand Inquisitors look a lot alike, but they are actually two different characters. If he doesn't appear more on this, I'm really going to miss the actor, but it is a great character moment for both. You know, even in this situation, he legitimately is like... I, I think he tells her, you, you're no longer needed. She just caught Obi-Wan, and, and he's like, you're no longer needed. And she's like, you're not going to take this from me. You're not going to take credit, something like that, you know. We will find you! Take a chill pill, General Zod. And Obi-Wan and Anakin sense each other. Very tense music plays, and we hear the iconic breathing, epic ending. Yeah, really, really looking forward to next week. This looks like it's going to be a great show. I'm glad that, I mean, we knew that Anakin was going to be in the show at some point. I hope he's gonna, you know, get involved pretty soon also, but, I mean, it does make sense that he didn't yet, if he didn't sense Obi-Wan, and, and we have seen before, it is this kind of thing of, if one of them can sense, you know, if, if one person with force powers can sense another person with force powers, that means that the, you know, it's a, it's a two-way streak. And, yeah, so... The, the, you know, I've, I'm on the record as saying, not a big fan of the, when, when he's speaking, I don't think he gives that strong, uh, Hayden Christensen, I don't think he gives that strong performance in the prequels. He does give a really strong performance when he is, you know, when, yeah, when he's not saying anything and it's just in looks and such. And I've seen him do incredible acting elsewhere. I think without George Lucas's, not great acting direction. I think he'll do a really great job on this. And yeah, it's it's really cool of him to to even show back up because like he got made fun of a lot of years for the kind of you know, yeah, people hating his performance and you know, making fun of him for the sand line. He's reading what's on the page. You know, I I don't know how you would make those lines and, and again, George Lucas's acting direction, but yeah, absolutely love this. Really excited to see. And and Andor looks like it's going to... Holy crap, I cannot wait for for Andor and what they're saying about... I, I haven't been able to watch a Mandalorian Season 3 
teaser yet. But the things people are describing makes it sound really, really cool. So, yeah, that's it for this one. I will catch you next time.